Here's our newest praise report. Africa, partial update as of April 8, 2022. Before I give my report, I want to share something about Africa you may not know. Africa land area is 30.37 million square kilometers. China land area is 9.6 million square kilometers. The United States of America land area is 9.8 million square kilometers. Europe area is 10.18 million square kilometers. That means Africa is bigger than all of Europe, China, and the United States together. Think about this. Africa has 60% land suitable for farming. Africa owns 90% of raw material reserve. Africa owns 40% of the global gold reserve. Africa has 33% of diamond reserve. Africa has 80% of coal tons global reserve that is a mineral for telephone and electronics production. Mainly in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Africa has 60% of global cobalt reserve, which is a mineral for car battery manufacturing. Africa is rich in oil and natural gas. Africa, especially Nambia, has the world's richest fish coastline. Africa is rich in manganese, in iron and wood. Africa has 1.3 billion inhabitants, which means Africa is subpopulated. The suitable land for farming of the Democratic Republic of Congo is capable of feeding all of Africa Africa holds 65% of the world's suitable land for farming, meaning it could feed the whole world. So what is the problem? Why are most people poor and suffer? Africa is not poor. For centuries, the West and corrupt, greedy companies have stolen the wealth of that country. There's all the corruption within the country, like in any other country of the world. Therefore, common people suffer. Besides physical food, people need mostly spiritual food in Africa. By this I mean Bibles that have not been corrupted by removing the names of Yahuwah and Yahusha and replacing them with titles which can be applied to any false god. I have sent a few scripture Bibles from here, from the United States, that I can buy for $20, plus shipping between $40 to $60 and one time of $80, which is already expensive. And it takes from six weeks to three months to get there. I contacted the people in South Africa where these Bibles are being printed to get a quote to ship three scriptures to Uganda and three scriptures to Malawi, hoping to get a better deal. They quoted me $110 plus about $200 shipping since the postal service does not deliver to Uganda or Malawi. I shipped two cell phones on January 26, which were donated to Kenya as of April 9th, or April 8th, which is today, they have not arrived yet. I have a tracking number and it keeps on telling me in transit. 
I shipped all the one memory stick containing many Bible studies and PowerPoint presentation via priority mail costing $40 to Malawi on February 16, and it has not yet arrived as of April 8. The post office here quoted me 6 to 10 days. That's why I had to pay so much, because it's supposed to get there a lot faster. Maybe we could apply Ephesians 6.12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I am just trying to point out that it will get harder and harder to get this message of salvation out to such countries as we are nearing the end of time. So what we need to do, we need to do quickly. There are currently 11 active projects in Kenya, one in Malawi, two in Uganda, making a total of 14. And here's some pictures of some of the groups that we are supporting and have been supporting for almost a year. This was a group number eight in Malawi's first Passover. And here is a picture on the left of the unleavened bread they baked for the feast. Now here was one of the questions they asked at that time. Can we use boiled eggs during this feast? What about green maize? Of course, I replied, you know, it's new for these people. They learn. And I'm very happy and glad and thankful that you do learn and they want to learn and they want to do what Yahuwah requires of all of us. Here's an encouraging message with this picture here. I received uh, from the leader this week, which, one, which I want to explain on the next slide. Now he wrote me, I met this old pastor, which is this uh, man here. We discussed things about our message. He invited me to his home for more study, though he considers me his student because I'm young. He is the one who gave me Bible classes last year. He is wondering today where I saw or get this truth that I told him. He thinks young men should just receive whatever elders have found, which is not religion. Please pray for us. I am planning to visit him two days after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So let's keep him in prayer so he can teach the elder man or the elder with the message that truly is coming from Scripture. Here's group number one, Calvin and Kenya, as they celebrate their Passover, partaking of the bread and unfermented wine, as well as the foot washing. The next slide contains three small video clips showing it in action. I'm sorry, but I'm not able to uh, play these three clips on this uh, particular presentation. Group number seven in Uganda on the right side is the advertising or invitation for the seminar. The end of this month they will be holding. He writes, after the next End Times Seminar in April, I have been invited to minister in Kenya in the month of May. All handling End Times message. Remember me in your prayers. Shalom, Dan and Irene. This is group number four, Victor. 
In Kenya, showing their Passover service with the foot washing, it is a joy to see people accepting Bible truth, trying to follow Torah as best as they can. People are learning step by step, one by one. And this is our largest group. They do have Wi-Fi that they receive from us. And here's just a short video clip of their service. On this table. As we have at this, the one who was betraying Yehovah was with among them. This is our news group in Uganda. The leader was on Zoom with us last Sabbath. Here is part of his assembly and the studies he had printed for them. We can see here scripture reading for Passover and unleavened bread. He also printed about 100 calendars to give to his people. Here is an email I received from this new group leader from Uganda. He said, Zoom was a brand new experience for me. I learned so much. We had Passover in Uganda. It was a blessed time for us to commemorate the heavenly ordinance. And it was for the glory of Yahuwah. I wanted to have this Passover together with all the members, but it was too costly. We couldn't manage it. But since we went through the Passover studies on Sunday, members had the Passover in their different homes. I've attached the photos, that next slide, of my family having the Passover on April 4. And two other members of our group, the children of Yahuwah, who lived nearby, accompanied my family, and we had a successful Passover brother. Previously, I talked about our brothers and sisters who are in Oyam district. They are waiting for me. They want me to come and speak to them for two days and encourage them. And as Yahuwah allows, I am intending to plant a fellowship there by the grace of Yahuwah. I am planning to go and speak to them on Thursday, April 14, and come back in the evening of Friday, April 15. My transport, accommodation, and meals will cost me $85. Pray for me. Shalom. Now here we see some pictures of the first Passover in their home, as he has promised they did. This is group number five in Kenya. The leader's name is Felix, and that was their first Passover. Now this is their group, which we just saw. Part of them doing the uh, foot washing. They also have a small orphanage in Kenya. We have been supporting them since September 2021. Here is another group in Kenya, group number nine, celebrating the first Passover. Here you can see, as a red arrow shows, a copy of the Scripture Bible. This particular Bible took three months to get there and they had to pay $60 before the post office would give it to them. Even though I already paid $88 to ship it, I included one book at the time and some uh, Bible studies. They, in addition, wanted another $60. So you can see the corruption in some of these countries taking advantage of these people. During the month of March, we paid out $1,600.50 more than we received on donations. The difference was made up of the credit balance that we had left over from the month of February. 
We were able to complete the following project with your help during that month. We supplied Wi-Fi in Uganda. We bought 35 chairs for a couple groups. We bought one tent, one loudspeaker system. We replaced a leaking roof, purchased a cell phone, and most of the remaining funds were spent more for food because of Passover and printing materials to give to the people participating in uh, the ordinance. Now, as I mentioned before, we need about $2,000 a month for printing and material and food. Our current needs are, this is an addition, and specifically for group number 12, they want or they need a cell phone, which costs about $180 because the other one doesn't work well enough, because that lady wanted to come uh, on Zoom with us, and but uh, the phone that she has will not work for that. Or the one more site tent uh, she needs and 10 more chairs because her group is growing. Now there's three groups and that's number four, number one, and maybe number six that could use a small computer, which would cost about 350 to $400 each. So they can download all the presentation and Bible studies for later use. Because we don't know how long we have the opportunity with the internet or Wi-Fi there, because it's uh, not very dependable. But this way, they would have all the information at fingertips for a later use. So we are praying that this may happen. This was just a short report of what happened during the past month in Africa with your support in prayer and financial help. Thank you to everyone and praise, praise be to our Heavenly Father. I like this, uh, this Bible verse in Psalm thirty-seven twenty-five, where it states, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. I believe these funds for Africa, Pakistan and India are an investment in the bank of heaven. Why? Because Yahushua said in Matthew 25:40, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Shalom.